What is up, y'all? It's your boy Kylie Green, Too Fresh here, holding it down for Carnival Spirits. We be those motherfucking ninjas in action. It's the Juggalo Takeover, and this right here is going to be the first edition of my new segment titled Questions with Cali Green, Too Fresh. So, this first question we got for y'all was brought up by the one and only D Lyrical while he was in a hangout with our boy. Scotty Two Balls. Let's see what the fuck D Lyrical wants to know. All right. You saw the axe got signed, right? Yes. And 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 so you tell me since you're and you're in this scene and you know so much about it, who's the next one that should? The next one that should sign to M and E or what? Next the, the next underground artist that you think should be signed by Eminem or M and E or fucking psychopathic. How about, how about D-Lyrical? <laughs> so, who is the next artist to be signed to Psychopathic or Magic Ninja Entertainment? Now, I've been sitting on this for the last few months, and I've compiled a list of artists that I believe deserve to be signed, maybe not to Magic Ninja or Psychopathic, but just period so let's go ahead and go through this motherfucking list and try to figure out where some of these artists would make a good fit first off we've got diabolic the monster you don't want a problem with the monster bomb shit staring at the balls like diabolic a convict lyrics like a bullet and you watch a vietnam flicks where you just a bulb like a listen to a bomb scene. so diabolic the monster has been in the game for quite a while honestly he was once part of Jonestown Records, which was the very short-lived Dark Half sub-label. After Jonestown disbanded, he went on to join up with LSP, where he dropped his motherfucking album titled Gator Boy. And in my opinion, that is one of the greatest fucking albums to come out of that label, period. I mean, that's just my opinion. But anyways... After his little stint with LSP, he went on to join up with Murder Music, where he put out his album, There Will Be Blood. Now, prior to being part of Jonestown Records, you know, he did some mixtapes and whatnot. Um, prior to that, though, he was part of a group titled The Maniacs, alongside future members of AXE. He was also part of AXE for a very short stint of time. It didn't go too far because he had to take a step back for family. But you can catch a song or two he did with the group on their album, Psycho Volume 1. Now, where do I believe Diabolic the Monster would make a nice little fit? I personally don't see him doing like magic ninja entertainment or psychopathic records because he is a very family oriented motherfucker you know he does music purely for himself and the fans he's not really into like you know the whole money aspect or touring or anything like that so when it comes to diabolic the monster 
I think maybe 4-2 Records, which is Liquid Assassin's label. Now, Liquid Assassin, we all know, was part of LSP. He's been part of other fucking labels in the past as well. But he recently left LSP and is now working on his label for two records. I think Diabolic the Monster would add some freshness to that label alongside fucking Liquid Assassin, Crazy Act, Diabolic the Monster. I mean, those are three fucking choppers that are all just killing it, have been killing it. But let's go ahead and move on to our next artist. It's West Coast, you know we're chopping on your hoe. Swinging on the axe, putting hoes up in the dough. What's the leader of the psych ward, leaving you for dead? Open carnival of carnage while I'm hacking off your head. The one and only Chucky Chuck, don't give a fuck. OG DGAF, motherfucker. As some of y'all may know, Chucky Chuck was part of a group known as DGAF that was signed to Suburban Noise Records. Chucky Chuck has been putting in mad work as of late and is really branding himself as a solo artist. He hasn't put out any like official full length releases or anything, but you know, he was signed to Suburban Noise Records, went on to be part of the Cottonmouth Kings label that they did after Suburban Noise. I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head, but it didn't last long. And now he's just kind of flying solo but i personally think that he might make a good fit with psychopathic records now i say this because he has a really good relationship with ouija mac you know they've put out some t-shirts together i just think that psychopathic records would be a good fit for him he's also a very self-motivated self-hustling motherfucker and that's the type of shit that is going on at psychopathic records right now you know with icp focusing mainly on themselves they're looking to just kind of give artists that little push and let them do their own thing you know ouija mac is a good example he's out there hustling like a fucking beast i think chucky chuck is on that same level and he could really bring a lot of freshness to the label and he just really needs that tiny little push to get him in that spotlight. You know, maybe get him some tour spots, things like that. So, motherfuckers, let's go ahead and move on to our next artist. Extra Overdose is a motherfucker who's been popping up in my news feed constantly on Facebook as of late. He's been fucking, you know, out there doing his thing, hustling his fucking ass off, and I personally believe that he deserves a deal. Now, where would he make a good fit? It could be Magic Ninja Entertainment. It could be Psychopathic Records. I mean, honestly, he would make a good fit either or. What I think would be dope is possibly a group with him and Lex the Hexmaster. It's known that I'm not a big Lex the Hexmaster fan, but I do like a lot of the shit I've heard him do on other people's tracks. Now, I think that maybe him and Extra Overdose would be a good combination. Their sounds sound like they're perfect. They would mesh, you know, and I like to hear that shit, so... Maybe Extra Overdose would be a good fit for Magic Ninja Entertainment. I don't know. What do y'all think? Let's move on to the next motherfucker. What you wanted to give, you have by love. And Zug motherfucking island. Now... Zug Island once was signed to Psychopathic Records. More so, weren't they formed by fucking Violent J? Didn't he, like, help put that group together because they were supposed to be his group? But, you know, as time went on, Zug Island 
kind of got dropped from the label, went on to do their own thing. But they've been doing a lot as of late, and they are still widely accepted in the Juggalo universe. For this reason, I believe that they deserve another chance with Psychopathic Records. It'd be fresh as hell to have them back on the label. You know, a lot of motherfuckers believe that during the time that they were part of Psychopathic Records, that was seen to many as the golden era of Psychopathic Records. So, you know, why not give them another shot? You feel me? So let's move on to our next artist on the motherfucking list. Double hit monster, double hit snake. Double hit dog, we will double hit everything. Double hit everything. Double hit everything. Double, 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 double hit everything. Mastermind, schizo, the motherfucking Orthus. Now, they have not put out an album in a little bit, but. You know, the two on their own are fucking phenomenal solo artists. I'm a huge Mastermind fan. Schizo's fucking dope. When you put them together, that level of freshness is something that I believe is highly underrated. And I believe with the proper push that they could push those numbers. You know, Mastermind's been in the game for fucking ever, y'all. Fucking Nottis. Fucking Nottis. One of the groups that inspired ICP at their earlier stage. The Orthus definitely deserves a fucking contract. Now, Psychopathic Records? I don't know, maybe. Maybe. Magic Ninja? I don't see that. LSP? Possibly. I mean, Mastermind did put out one album through LSP titled The Masterpiece, and that shit was fresh. If I remember correctly... I think they actually helped sell the Orthus first album as well. I could be wrong. Someone correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. But I definitely believe that the Orthus deserves a real fucking shot at a fucking career. So, who's next on our list? Let's see. The cop original down with the criminals been A visceral copies of pitiful Max is back like spine of infinite Won't stop till I'm a legend Got the mind of Dillinger around taking it all Now the match is one fall But a one, two, three I'm crowned the winner But don't stop, son I'm a hot gun The fire rate is automatic Catch a hot one Mad motherfucking Max Now Mad Max Got his name From Violent J Way back in the fucking day He came in the studio Recorded a track And You know Violent J told him that he should be called Mad Max because his name was Max. I believe that's the story there. But anyways, Mad Max has been killing the scene for years. He's got an album coming out here soon called The Dybbuk, which I'm personally looking forward to. You know, fucking Mission Infect motherfucking General. This motherfucker deserves a real fucking shot. He's kind of, you know, gone around the scene been part of a few labels here and there but nothing really concrete personally lsp would be the perfect label for max that's me personally i know he also has um some sort of a relationship with the drp you know i see them talking to each other on facebook so with that being said maybe force five records you know they're making waves as of right now so that might be a good fit, but LSP, yeah, I definitely see that shit. Let's get to the next artist on our list. The Horacle King, you don't believe. Back on your door, kill everything. Wipe on the floor, fish on your screen. You know you want more. Give me a screen. Now watch me eat and shit and pee and eat it again. You see it even. Thinking about puke and try even. He can't believe it. He wants to see it again. So technically, King Gordy is signed to MNE, but he signed to MNE through The Last American Rockstars, aka Lars. I think that he deserves a deal of his very fucking own as a solo artist. You know, in my opinion, King Gordy has never fucking disappointed me. He's put out fucking hit album after hit fucking album. Hail Darth Lord Vader, one of my fucking favorite 
horrorcore albums of all time. Jesus Christ Mistress, fucking fresh. Fucking King of Horrorcore Volumes 1 and 2. Fucking Cobain Diaries. Like, the list goes on and fucking on. But he's only really getting a push alongside Bizarre with Lars. So, why not just give him a fucking deal and see what the fuck happens? Why not? Maybe it will happen. We'll just have to wait and see, I guess. So, next on the fucking list, we have... What the fuck you looking at me like I'm unstable? Dreams are fables and they coming like cables. Life is a nightmare, so I choose to end it. I'm always real and I never pretended. Every day I'm waking up and nothing but cold sweat. Looking at myself like, aren't you dead yet? Fuck the world with a knife dick seven. Pussy motherfucker, I'm going to heaven. Motherfucking politicize. My fucking boy right there. Now... Politicize has been doing his own thing for fucking years. He's really been making waves in the underground. He's worked with fucking DJ Clay. He's done a grip of shit with Jason Porter. This is an artist that is highly over fucking looked. And I think with the proper push, could definitely really go the distance. So, where the fuck would Politicize go? in this fucking puzzle. Where the fuck could we fit politicize? I don't really know if MNE or psychopathic would be good for him. Now, if Esham were able to fucking, you know, really bring fucking real life back to what it was, definitely. But Esham's not really, you know, he's just doing his own thing and is really only using real life for himself. So, I don't really see that working. But maybe Force 5 Records, possibly, you know? I think that's possible. I think that's doable. He seems to be on their level. So, I don't know. Maybe that'd be a good fit for him. Let's get on to our next motherfucking artist. <laughs> V Sinister. Now, as most of y'all know, V Sinister put out an album with Psychopathic Records titled The Hunting Season. The album did horrible fucking numbers. And V Sinister believes that it is due to the production value. Now, he stated that basically the files that they brought for the album weren't the right file types. So they needed to be converted over so that they could be put on disc. So I believe he said that they fucking converted the files using like a fucking PlayStation or something. And end result was an album with shitty quality. Now V Sinister has really grown a fucking lot over the fucking years. And I'm talking he's grown a hell of a fucking lot. The Great Stairwell is a dope ass fucking masterpiece of a fucking album if you haven't heard it check it the fuck out i personally believe that v sinister deserves another shot if not with like psychopathic records then maybe force 5 records maybe lsp i don't know but he definitely deserves another shot because he's killing it straight fucking killing it as of late so we've got one more artist on our motherfucking list. Who is it? Find out. My motherfucking homie, Trip Vomit. Now, Trip Vomit is relatively unknown in the motherfucking scene. He put out an album through Genocide Entertainment, which is a very small, you know, kind of label out of Los Angeles. It's really more of a crew, but he put out an album through them years ago. I'm talking probably close to 10 years ago, and it was fresh. He's done some tracks here and there, which you can find on SoundCloud, but he's never put out like a real solid fucking album. Like I said, he put out like, he put one out like maybe 10 years ago, which was fresh. 
but it could definitely have had better production value. And you can't even find that shit. I've been trying to get a hold of those songs for at least fucking seven years. I had them on my old computer. The shit fucking crashed and I lost all of my fucking OG trip vomit shit. He doesn't even have any of that fucking shit. So, yeah. If you can find that shit, I mean, I applaud you. But trip vomit has got mad fucking skills in his highly underrated way over fucking looked he deserves a deal maybe strange music maybe it's possible i personally think it's possible i think that'd be the perfect fit for him that's me personally though so that's my list of artists that i believe should have a fucking record deal who are some artists y'all motherfuckers think should have a contract do you know any of the artists that I have on my list and do you believe that they're worthy of contracts? Are there any motherfucking artists you don't know that appear to be interesting to you? You know? Comments, fucking subscribe, like, dislike, do it up motherfuckers. I'm Cali Green Too Fresh. This has been Questions with Cali Green Too Fresh. This is Carnival Motherfucking Spirits. We are those ninjas in action. And it is the Juggalo Takeover, motherfuckers. Whoop, whoop. Till next we meet. Peace.